sometimes visual clues are all we have when we choose to make a value judgment. Sometimes that's enough. In Toronto, there's a band called the BFGs. They're not only a musical group, they're also a tightly knit group of individuals who see themselves and define themselves in their own terms. We took cameras to where the BFGs live and to where they work, and this is how they see themselves. BFG is basically a band, uh, basically a band. It starts with a band. We're an organization. We're almost a political organization. We're almost an institution. We're, what we're trying to do is, what we're trying to do is make sure that the big money people never get a piece of what we're going to be putting out. We've got our own record company, our own record label. We do all our own printing. We make our own t-shirts. We make our own stickers. We promote our own gigs. We try to run our own clubs. We put gigs on in halls. And we try and keep all the people with the big money out of it. It's a fact of life. It's like the outcast of everything that gathers and regroups and reforms. That's what I think of the gish. I guess it's almost like outcast sort of uh, performers get together and become one. They're peaceful. They they are, uh, they work a lot. They work hard, and uh, and I think we can do something out of this. Basically, when we started, we were a pretty shitty band, and, and we figured people were going to call us a bunch of f anyways by the time we walked off stage. So we walked on stage and said, well, since you're going to call us a bunch of f uh, here we are, a bunch of f We can take it. We can take it. Can't insult me. I don't care. There is uh, all kind of things going on, like uh, each of them are kind of individual for themselves. Uh, there is a lot of artists around in many fields. You can you see now music, but it's not only music. There is uh, other field of the art that people fulfill and, and work towards there. Like I moved out with my girlfriend and moved in with the groups, and uh, it worked out pretty good. I mean, I can do all my artwork here. There's lots of space. There's a lot of things to do. It keeps me busy. Like some things like this are good to put a message across. That's our character, Victor Pitskull, lighting the little kid's glue bag. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be able to pull your weight and keep your shit together and not f up everybody else. You have to be able to go out and and deal with the public and not make everybody else in the band look bad. We can't have people with BFG on the back of their jacket running around in bars causing trouble with people because it just reflects bad upon all the rest of us. So we don't allow people like that to hang around with us. You keep it together or take a walk. I like being different. I like being different. I'm different than all my friends at school. I'm the only Mohawk in my school. Aside from a couple guys that got shaved heads and stuff, you know, like funny haircuts. But uh, yeah, I'm the only punk in my school. This is the only hardcore, punk hardcore. There's a couple of hardcore, Metallica and Slayer and that. I don't like the long hair stuff. Well, to me, uh, my Mohawk means a lot to me. It's uh, some kind of a social statement that uh, it's hard to say because there are different, many different kinds of mohawks. Uh, there's the peace punks who have mohawks. There's the war punks who have mohawks. There are the trendies who have mohawks. But we definitely aren't skinheads. I don't know. I guess I kind of grew up this way. I mean, my family was never rich or anything like that. 
And I was made do with what I had, and I like it that way. No comment. You, were, you walk down the street and people call you a skinhead. I mean, we're not skinheads by any means. <laughs> so it's their own stupidity. I mean, if it bothers them, it's bothering them, not us. No, they, they don't make it trouble, no. And uh, the, the only thing they go on that with the, the head, the ten clients, hair, hair in ten colors. <laughs> I don't want to know them, personally. I don't want to know them. Because they're probably a bunch of, you know. Well, they're, they're a movement. They're they're uh, they're very an, they're very anti drugs, which is good. Anti anti uh, junkies, anti needles, which is really good. And uh, they fit right into the community. I mean, Kensington's a crazy place. I've lived here all my life, and uh, I mean, the first couple of weeks they were here, they used to live across the street. People gave them the odd, you know, those guys look pretty strange. But I mean, uh, well, they fit right in. They're part of the market. Heroin is, is not a good drug. Who feels good by getting tired and, and passing out and puking? Uh, Coke is a never-ending drug. It, it's not satisfying. It just means more and more and more and more and more. You know, no, anything, anybody who wants to get themselves into the lifestyle of taking a drug that means more and more and more and more and more means they're going to have to adopt a criminal lifestyle to support their habit. And that's all wrong. That's where stepping on other people's toes comes into the picture, and that's where you get out of our picture. I've been working, I've been working, and I've still got so terrible long to go. Hey! I do a lot of work here and there. I work, do doorman work at bars and stuff like that. And uh, I was doing tattoos for a while, which I'm soon to be doing again. Right now I'm working as a painter, painting houses and whatnot. I work on President of VA Productions. Which is? Uh, recording company, studio, I uh, put out records, all sorts of things like that. Well, I do construction. Right. Working real hard. I right. work on a jackhammer. Right. I destroy things. I break them up. I'm a dental assistant. So, yeah. So, I did... Th these are from my patients. How do I survive, personally? Yeah. Uh, the band. Uh, I do extra work in movies, work odd jobs, blah, you know. You just stepped on my god! My god! My god! My god! My god! Oh my god! Ah! There's nothing to do in the city. Like, the city has never built anything for kids, really. You know, there's playgrounds for, for, for like, 10-year-olds, but there's nothing for 16-year-olds. And, uh, you know, you hang with a group of friends, you want to... You call yourself a name because it's something interesting, and next minute you're blown out of proportion. You've got other kids calling themselves something else, and you clash. It just boredom turns to violence very easily. A little nervous and a little mad, because, you know, six on one ain't fair. They're just cowards. Oh, it's an easy thing to follow, to follow a following, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to think much when you're doing the same thing that everybody else does. And I guess that's what makes us different, because we all do different things from each other in the same place at the same time. I'll say we're angry at society and stuff, but instead of going out and causing trouble, we've decided we turned anger into something more productive. No, no I don't like gang use, because then there's supposed to be some kind of leader or some, some, somebody pushing you around so you'll push other people around, that kind of thing. No. I think it's pretty ridiculous, actually. That's not something we really want to be a part of. Uh, the, the major difference with us is that we're not into crime. You know, I mean, like, for, for somebody to be classified, for a group of people to be classified as a gang, they have to be into crime. If there's no 
If there's no crime, there's no gang. Because there's nothing to be gained, so there's nothing to fight for. Irish singer-songwriter Pierce Turner and New York composer Philip Glass on working together and their latest individual projects. Next on the new music. They hold it together in some miraculous way.